Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. The very last animal here on the homestead are our pigs. All of our other animals we've already moved down to our farm property, but the pigs are the very last animal to be here on the homestead. And today we're gonna start planning and doing a little bit of work on their new area at the farm. We're also doing some figuring because we need more pens. We need to think about the future of us raising pigs, how many that's gonna be, farrowing areas, and all that kind of stuff. So Kevin and I are gonna be kind of talking through some of that with you guys and also talking a little bit about the cost of all of that. Right, yeah, not only is this going to be a big project and a big undertaking, it's also going to be a pretty expensive one, but we're gonna try our hardest to keep costs at a minimum. And a lot of that is gonna to have to do with moving a lot of what we have here at the homestead down to the farm. Now, before we head down to the farm, I wanna do a little review with you guys about the types of pigs that we raise, uh, why we've chosen these breeds, and then really just kind of the numbers of pigs that we have so that as we're planning throughout the day today, you have a better idea of why we need to plan for what we are. So let's take a walk around, take a look at the pigs, and we'll, in, we'll introduce you to them. So we're gonna start over here in our, with our boar pen. Our boar's name is Charlie. He's the big guy laying on the ground down here. And then we have two of our gilts in with him. Now, for those of you who don't know, gilts are young female pigs who haven't yet had their first litter of piglets. So both of these guys, both of these girls are in here with Charlie getting bred and soon they'll be moving back out so that when they have their piglets, they can be by themselves. And once they have piglets, then they will be known as sows. So gilts are young females and sows are females that have already had piglets. We raise Idaho pasture pigs. Uh, we did, we've raised a lot of different pigs in the past, a lot of different breeds. And about three years ago, we got our first Idaho pasture pigs. We have completely fallen in love with them and we will never raise another type of pig as far as I'm concerned. Idaho pasture pigs are by far the best pigs we've ever had. Their size is manageable. Um, they don't do a lot of rooting just by design, the way their body is structured. They don't do a lot of digging into the dirt um, and they're just great temperament. They're really like having big dogs around the farm. They're that friendly. Now, I think the most appealing part of Idaho pasture pigs is that when they are completely mature, they're not nearly as big as a standard hog. But if you're raising them for meat, they still get up to the same processing size in about the same amount of time. So we normally aim for about 275 to 300 pounds in the nine to 10 month old range. And uh, we get there just about every time. And that is really on par with your standard market hog. But the nice part is if you're keeping them for breeding is once they get to that 300 pound range, they really don't get a whole lot bigger, but they're not going to get six or 700 pounds like a regular standard hog. And I think that's what makes them the most appealing type of pig, especially for a smaller homestead. All right, let's take a walk inside here. I'm gonna show you what I mean by how friendly these pigs are. So again, in this pen, we have our boar. His name is Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Hey, big guy. And he is just a big, lazy dude. He loves to be scratched. And then here we have Donna. And Donna is a gilt. Right, Donna? And you're gonna have babies before too long. And here we have Linda. And they all love the attention. But these guys, hopefully we'll be having babies later this spring. So these are our two gilts and our boar. Let's take a walk over. I'm gonna introduce you to our sow and one of our other gilts who actually should be having babies within the next month or so. All right, Donna, I need to go. All right, so now we're over in our uh, sow pen. Well, sow and gilt pen. This is our sow here. Her name is Myrtle. And Myrtle's had several litters, right Myrtle? Yeah. And 
myrtle is by far our friendliest of all the pigs here on the farm. And this one is Ginger. Ginger is pregnant and she will hopefully be having her babies sometime in April. Ginger, this will be her first litter, so after this, she'll be a sow as well. All right, let's head over. We have one more pen that we need to show you with two little piglets in that are actually Myrtle's babies from last fall. Now, like I said, the two in this pen, these are Myrtle's babies. They were born in November, so they're about four months old. These two, we're actually raising up for meat for this year. We're raising one for, for our family and then one for my parents as well. We are super happy with the way that these guys are growing. For only four months old, I think they're looking great. You look at their butts, they have good looking hams. I'm just super excited to be raising these guys up. All right, now that you've seen all of the pigs that we have, let's head down to the farm. We wanna show you guys the area that we're gonna be building the new pig pen and talk to you about some of the considerations we have to make when we're designing it. We're down at the farm. We're right by our chicken moat area. You guys have seen this area a ton of times. This is, was our big project for last spring. We built this chicken moat. This is about a one acre area here that the chicken moat goes around. We wanted to show you this area again because it gives you some context as to where the new pig pen is going to be. The pig pen is going to be behind the chicken moat in the area that's still part of our hay field. That's where we're going to have that. Uh, let's walk over there so we can give you guys some kind of perspective as to where that's going to be. Well, we're back behind the chicken moat area and we're standing in part of our hay field. And this is where the new pig pen area is going to be. Yeah, the pig pen is actually going, we're going to leave about a 12 foot alley between the chicken moat and where the pig pens will start. So we can drive in here with the UTV or drive in here with the tractor, whatever we need to do. And that will also serve as kind of a loading area so we can move pigs from one pen to another or into a trailer based on you know going in that alleyway. So the pig pens will actually run out that way. Let's spin around and we'll kind of show you out that way. Now, when we were planning the new pig pen, we had a lot to think about because not only do we have all of the pigs that we currently have, but we have to plan for future litters of pigs that we're going to have. And we also need to plan for, you know, just future expansion. Right now we just have Charlie, our one boar, but we're hoping by the end of the summer, we may be getting a second boar. So we need to plan right away for a pen for him as well. We also need to plan for two farrowing pens, farrowing areas. Uh, we have that down at the house and, you know, we are using part of a barn uh, for that area. So we, we just have a lot of things to consider. Also raising out meat pigs for ourselves, raising out meat pigs for other people. So lots of things going on in the planning process. Right, so we did come up with a plan. I've got it here and I wanna go over it just a little bit with you guys. Now, this may change before we get to the final uh, version of this, but this is basically what we're planning out for right now. So let's go find a place out of the wind so I can show you guys our plan. And then we need to talk about kind of the unpleasant part of this plan, which is the money issue. Let's go sit down. All right, we moved inside of our hay barn so that we can talk for a little bit. I've got our plan here. Let me go over with you quickly uh, the general plan of what we're going to be doing for the pigs. So this is the basic plan for the new pig pen. Overall, the size is gonna be 288 feet long by 96 feet wide. That's uh, 18 hog panels uh, long and six hog panels wide. It's gonna be about two thirds of an acre total in size or about 27,000 square feet. Our plan right now, uh, so the chicken moat area would be over here. This will be that alleyway that I was kind of talking about earlier. And then for the actual pig pen, we're going to have our two farrowing pens here, a grow out pen right next to that, and then two big pens for our sows, and then two other pens down here on the end for our boars. 
that is the overall plan. Uh, things may change a little bit as we move along. I haven't figured out exactly where I want all of the gates and things like that, but this is gonna be the general plan for the new pig pen. So as you guys can see, this project is going to take a lot of hog panels and a lot of T-posts. Uh, we figured out that we need 75 to 80 hog panels and like 220 to 230 T-posts. Now, T-posts and hog panels, just like everything else in the world these days, have gone up in price a ton in the last year. Last summer, we did a pretty big expansion to our, pig, to our pig pens at the homestead, and I added on quite a bit. And at that time, hog panels were about $22 a piece. T-posts were somewhere in the $3.69 range, if I remember correctly, mm -hmm. back then. So fast forward a year to us starting to plan this project, I was anticipating originally about the same price, maybe a little bit more, but you guys, Hog panels have gone from $22 a piece to $30 a piece, an $8 increase for every hog panel that we put up. And T-posts have gone from $369 to $569. So every hog panel that we use in this project needs three T-posts, one at each end and one right. in the middle. So that's an extra $6 per hog panel in the T-posts. Right. So the difference between doing this project last year and doing it now is about $1,200, just on hog panels and T-posts. Right, that doesn't take all the other things that we need to do into consideration, like building more feeding stations, putting up more gates, um, shelters yeah. for everybody. Um, you guys, it's gonna be a big undertaking. Yeah. Now, originally when we started planning this project, we had considered, you know, maybe we should just build the new pig pens down at the farm and leave our current setup at the homestead when we sell it. Well, given the price increase of everything, you guys, it's just come down to the pure and simple math that we can't afford to do that now. Right. We can't afford to leave everything at the homestead and build new things down here when the truth is we already have all of the T-posts that we would need at the homestead and we already have about two thirds of the hog panels at the homestead. So we need 75 hog panels. Our current setup at the homestead has 50 hog panels. And we also have a lot of T-posts still in the ground from when we had our dairy cow down there. We've already taken down all the fencing, you know, a year or more ago, but all the T-posts are still in the ground we need to get those T-posts out because every one of those T-posts that's in the ground is now worth almost $6. So I think one lesson that I personally have taken out of this whole situation, you guys, is that if you have a project that you're planning um, and you can afford to buy the materials for that project right away, even if you don't have time to do the project right away, go ahead and buy them. We had already started talking about this project last fall and we may have been able to save quite a bit by you know, purchasing the materials ahead of time, even though we knew we wouldn't have time to do it until this spring. And it seems like more and more, that's just happening with everything in the world. Right, now is also the time to be utilizing the resources that you already have. Right. It's not the time to take things to the junkyard or take things to the scrapyard. Uh, now's the time to be looking at the resources you already have and utilizing those in your projects. Right, and figuring out where you can save some money because you guys, there's no end in sight. As far as I can see, reading everything that I've read, these price increases are gonna keep coming and I hate to say it, but it looks like they're probably even going to get worse. So today we are actually starting to gather these materials that we're gonna need to put up that pig pen here at the farm. And the first thing that we're gonna be doing is taking out some of the T-posts at the homestead to start bringing down to the farm. Yeah, and I'm excited actually because I get to try something new today. I actually bought a new type of T-post puller uh, that works with the tractor. So we're gonna try that out when we get back to the homestead. I'd normally use a hand T-post puller, kind of like a lever action T-post yeah. puller, but you guys, I tried that on these T-posts that we're gonna pull out today. I could put all of my weight on it and they wouldn't even budge. Because it's such rocky ground. Right. Mm -hmm. So um, we're gonna try this new one that I bought for the tractor. It's just a small metal plate 
slides over the T-post and then you pull it out with the tractor. So we're gonna head back to the homestead and we're gonna give that a try. Well, we're back at the homestead and we're actually back in an area that a few years ago we had some people come and, and clear this area or semi-clear it for our very first milk cow, Hope. Uh, you can see that there are just, there are lots of T-posts here. We had this sectioned off into two separate sections uh, so that she could eat on one side as another side was growing back up. Now we've already taken down the wire from the electric fencing that we had in here. We, we took that down probably a year ago or so. Now when we bought the farm, Hope, our dairy cow, was actually the very first animal that we moved down to the farm and that was just about two years ago. So this has really kind of just remained open and not used in any way. Some things have started growing back a little bit, but now that we're getting out here and getting these tea posts, we'll be able to get back here and bush hog and keep this looking a lot nicer, keep it looking uh, clear for, you know, the, the new owners of our homestead when we sell. So right now we are gonna pull out these T-posts using the tractor. Kevin brought the tractor home. Uh, I'm gonna show you the little gadget that we're gonna be using that's gonna make this project so easy. Because the ground here is like rock or gravel, these T-posts are really in there hard. Like we were trying to use the, the lever action T-post puller uh, that we have and it just wasn't budging. When we first did this project and Kevin was working on putting in the T-posts, he was using one of those like handheld T-post pounders and it literally took him all day to just put in four or five of them and it was so hard on his body. We ended up having him contact one of our friends who has one of those gas powered T-post drivers that what we have now and he came over and we did this entire area, two sides, well the two of them did in, in a day. Whereas before it took Kevin like a whole day just to put in four or five of them. It's what inspired us to actually buy the gas powered uh, post driver. So because it was so hard to get those T-posts in, it is equally as hard to get these T-posts out. And so I'm very thankful that we have a gadget that's gonna make this very easy and that we can use the tractor. This is a gadget we're gonna use. It's just a piece of metal, costs about 20 bucks. We got this from MFA. I'm sure that you can find it at your local agriculture farm store. It is super easy to use. We're gonna use this in conjunction with a chain that we have attached to the tractor. And this just slips over the T-post. It has two areas here, one, two. We're gonna slip this over the T-post on the triangle area. And then there's an area here that we are just gonna feed one of the links of the chain right inside of there. Hook it on one of these links. And this, by the force of the tractor, is gonna pull up on this T-post and pull it right out of the ground. It is so slick and easy. Now we tested these on a few T-posts just a couple minutes ago. It is so quick and easy. It's gonna make short work of this big project. First day of spring. And I just want to sing to everything that's moving, every single little thing. To them birds flying free, fish in the sea, flowers and trees, every little bumblebee. I want to sing.
picture I can think of. I want to sing. I want to sing. Well, we got all of the T-posts out of Hope's old area. It ended up being 88 T-posts that we took out today. It took us just under two hours to take all of those out. I'd say that that tool is oh, it was, worth 20 it was bucks. Amazing. It was amazing. <laughs> now, Kevin calculated how much these T-posts are worth at today's cost of T-posts. Right. And it was just over $500 worth of T-posts that we took out today. When we bought them, I think they were around $3 a piece, and now they're almost $6 a piece. So it was definitely worth the time and effort to take these back out. They were no longer holding up a fence anyway. Right. They were just T-posts in the ground, and it was good to get them out. And now we'll be able to reuse them for the new pig pens. And back here, it's much more open and easy to get around so that we can keep this place cleaned up and looking nice. Right. We do have two other areas that we still need to take T-posts out of another day. We're going to try to get that done before the ticks and chiggers come out too bad. Well, there are already ticks. There are already ticks yeah. out today because the weather is warm today. But we're going to try to get the rest done before summer really hits. And then we're going to get started on the new pig pen. But this was definitely a good job done today. Glad to get this under our belts. Hey, you guys, if you're enjoying our videos, make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. And also remember that the best way you can help us here on the homestead is just to share our videos on your social media. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless. God bless.